and seeing all y'all. Yeah. Let's turn to page 334. Page 334. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. First and last stanzas. Blessed assurance.
Okay, like I say, uh, we will uh, turn this on. Um, be starting next week on the book of Daniel. Um, like I say, there's so many things I think that we need to really be looking at. The very next thing on our calendar is the rapture. That's what we're waiting on, right? Been waiting on since Jesus ascended to heaven. He said he was coming back. That's what we're waiting on. Um, that's the next thing. There's nothing else. <laughs> when, that, when that happens, uh, it's going to be awesome. So uh, we have a lot of things going on in our world today. We've got a lot of people asking a lot of questions. Don't know. They don't. Uh, Non-Christians. They they don't know about all this. Uh, people are really curious about end times and wondering what's going on and and all that. It's a great opportunity then to take that as a launching pad to be able to share the gospel with somebody. Um, because, like I said, there's a lot of questions. People don't know. They want to know. So uh, uh, we'll be going through that. Daniel's a great time, a uh, great thing for, for the time that we're living in. Um, one of the things that I've always been very strong in is, is uh, a couple of things. One is certainly uh, false teaching, things that are wrong, um, things that aren't quite right, uh, and, and also... Uh, our Bible and, and, and why the Bible is, is inerrant and it's uh, 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 sufficient. The, you know, back in the day we went through the inerrancy debate in Baptist life many years ago now um, and, and that came up and, and we had bumper stickers, you know, God said it, I believe it. And so, you know, the Bible said it and God said it, I believe it. So we do it, those kind of things. Um, uh, anyway, uh, but today, it's really, the argument is, is the sufficiency of Scripture. Um, you know, it's not sufficient. It's got to be added more to it. And um, we see that all the time. People have to add to the Word. They get special revelations from God that, unfortunately, you're just not in tune with God enough to know but I am, and he speaks to me, and special visions, and special speaks to me in a way. We see that stuff out there all the time, and I, I can't stand it. We see it, and, and I'm sorry, I love, uh, you know, I love being a Baptist, but it's all in our SBC, you know. I mean, they have these people that are, who get that, and they put them into positions of, of leadership, and want them to be president, and things like that, and all kind of crazy stuff, but let me tell you, the Bible ended. God's word is sufficient. The canon is closed. There's nothing else to add to it. And you're not any more special than anyone else to get some extra revelation from God about something, especially if it's going to be against what the Bible says and not uh, uh, consistent with that. But we see that all the time, right? I mean, we watch the TV preachers, evangelists, and thousands and thousands well more than that actually millions of people are following uh, a lot of these folks uh, and, and it's because the Bible isn't sufficient it's got to be more to it so you follow me now so a lot of them fly big Gulf Stream jets and live in million dollar mansions and you couldn't touch them if you had to or ever speak to them at all but you know uh, that kind of has a trademark with a lot of them I think if you fly a Gulfstream jet, you're a false teacher. I think that's like the first test <laughs> that we find out about it. But um, I believe the Bible. The Bible is absolutely sufficient for everything that we need. Everything. And um, I completely believe the Bible. Um, that's been some issues in the past uh, with, with some. A lot have, have gotten away from it in certain areas we go well i don't know you know they're living in a different area and people have said that you know whatever maybe it's a million you know billions of years we were evolved and all that and i don't know maybe maybe god used evolution to create us because you know uh, can our scientists be wrong they keep saying they're right you know um we have that we have people kind of waffle on it a little bit don't understand how important is that everything in the Bible is absolutely true. 
A lot of people who are an atheist or agnostic or humanist, humanist is the biggest religion, uh, they've been teaching that in our public schools forever, true humanism as a religion, and we've allowed it. Um, you know, it's been going on for a long time. But uh, they'll, they'll tell you that, that the Bible is, is, you know, it's just a bunch of good sayings and, and stuff like that. It's not really important to anything today. Um, you know, you can't really prove that the Bible is, is true. You know, so there's a lot of crazy stuff, wild stuff that's way out there. It's just not the norm, you know. It's not it. Um, but we need to have a good grasp of the Bible. Why do we, why do we believe the Bible? Um, John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Um, and we're going to find out the first reason that we need God's word. That's because it is truth. Uh, it, it, it's absolute truth. And even, even when it's used, uh, uh, maybe there is a passage that is not absolutely literal, but it is used in a figurative sense. Um, that is still true. <laughs> Everything is absolutely true. You can bank on it. Because we've seen it over and over again to where archaeology, uh, everything else, things that have happened, our science has caught up finally to the Bible that said it all along about whatever that topic might be. But it's absolute truthfulness. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it says what it means and it means what it says. Um, there's a, a, a book, and I stole some of this from, from him with Dr. John Barnett. Um, we have a John Barnett at our church, but this is a different guy, and I like to listen to him a lot. Uh, he teaches uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, seminary classes, and, and uh, I can basically get a seminary class online on YouTube while I'm mowing the lawns listening to it, and I listen to him regularly along with others. But, uh, so I ripped some of this stuff off from him. It fit my list, too. And this list is not necessarily in order of importance, it's just a, a, a list. But it's really, uh, uh, you know, seven reasons why uh, I believe the Bible and, uh, and, and would agree certainly uh, with him and his, his uh, 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 things that he said is, is dead on. So, um, first thing, and it probably is number one, my number one would be a little further down, but this would be close to it, or if not that. The reason we believe the Bible is truly God's word is because our Lord Jesus Christ said so. And this is what really uh, galls me, is when you have a reference book or a study Bible, or you have these preachers and teachers and pastors who will uh, denigrate the creation account and uh, say it didn't happen that way it took millions of years or they preach the gap theory the gap theory is is where God says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth that is chapter verse 2 that well there's a gap of billions of years in there and there was a whole race of people and there was animals and all that and they all got in trouble and died off there was death suffering sin and horrible stuff buried and then god started over again with adam and Eve. well how many times he had to start over because he started over again 1500 years later with uh, with uh, uh, noah um and and i said well that's where all the fossils come from is all that's that pre adam pre adamic 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 race that was here okay sure it just and there's nothing to base that on but people will spout that and they'll spout it from the pulpit um they'll they'll, they'll say but jesus has already give reference to all that stuff as being historical and truly happening most of them like to say and i've said this before you'll hear me say things and repeat things from the pulpit by the way not because i just want to fill up words but i think it's important that we say it you might miss it one day so i'm going to keep saying it the first 11 chapters of Genesis, people rip that out. First thing, that's all myth. That's nothing. You know, there wasn't no global flood. It just a local flood. Well, you know, which gets me is because we got topographical maps. 
Okay, it's not like we don't know anything. We've got satellites that's continually going around the earth, mapping it and measuring and taking pictures. You ever heard of Google Earth? You can go all the way back to 94, when it was under Microsoft Terra Server. See, black and white images of the earth. But I mean, it's, all, it's there. And we got topographical maps. Well, if it was a local flood, it would have, wouldn't have inundated hardly anything. You know, it, you can tell that everything is, it wouldn't, it couldn't happen. Um, so you have all this kind of stuff that, that goes on. But he believed in the verbal inspiration of the Bible. Jesus did. He mean, that means every word is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Every single word, every part of it, every uh, jot and tittle, which means every little part, every little stroke of the pen. Okay? A lot of like to say, well, only, which we can't find, we do not have is the original, the very first one, original number one, even though they made copies at the time, several copies that were number one, and they made copies from those, made more copies and copies. Um, they said, well, only that very first one is actually inspired. No, God is able to preserve his word. He is not sitting up there going, oh, we lost those manuscripts. That stuff, it just rotted away. What am I going to do now? How are we going to know? Because you're going to make copies. It's not going to be right. I you know, it's, I'm just lost. That's ridiculous. You know, that is ridiculous. God can preserve his word, and he will preserve his word, the true word of God, all the way till the end, till he is here. And the word comes and reigns in Jerusalem and will always be him, the word of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God. He's going to be coming and doing that. But it, it won't pass away until we're sitting there looking at the Word. Okay? Um, but it's, uh, that's it. And so Matthew 5.18 says, For verily, verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So it's all going to be fulfilled. This is Jesus talking. It's not going anywhere. The Bible that we have today is the Bible that they had yesterday and it's the Bible we'll have in the future. It is the Word of God. I mean, the, the Old Testament was pretty much canonized and all together at the time of Jesus. Okay? And then as they continued on and they wrote and put the New Testament together under the direction of the Holy Spirit with great wisdom, and, and all they, they decided which books would go in and which wasn't. They wanted it to make sure that it was actual things that uh, apostles that had actually seen Jesus and seen this stuff happen. They didn't let all this uh, outside stuff in. That means there's no errors uh, in science, history, or moral areas in the Bible. Uh, well, I'd say, well, the Bible's not a history book, so, you know, it, it does, you know, it, no, it is a history book. It wasn't made only for history, but everywhere where it speaks about history is going to be absolutely correct and absolutely right. Um, that means uh, 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 there's no errors at all. We call that inerrancy. I'm going to go through a ton of, of, of uh, text here, uh, verses by verse, but John 10, 35 said, If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. The scripture can't be broken. It can't be destroyed. Uh, now, I'm telling you, uh, back in the early days, uh, in the church, it, well, they tried to, and the, and, the, and the church had to separate them. They couldn't keep it all together. So they separated the books and put them in, in pots and put them everywhere else and hid them everywhere. We found the Dead Sea Scrolls that they had in Qumran. There's been others, but the, when they found all those, they had to separate them in smaller pieces uh, because they were trying to destroy, and if they hadn't, they would have probably destroyed the water. They would have wiped it out from the people having it. Um, early on in the in the in the fifteen uh, hundreds, uh, the, you know the Catholic Church, everybody did everything they could to shut down uh, being able to print the Bible. They killed so many people. You know, Wycliffe and so many others were tortured to death or burned at the stake because they dared pr print the Bible or get it in, redo it, get it into the hands of the common people. Um, so it's been through a lot, but it can't be broken. It can't be ended. It says uh, in 1717, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. He affirmed the historical reliability of the scriptures. 
And uh, so much so that, that he was speaking of Adam and Eve uh, as the first two humans. Because, you know, that's the thing now. Well, it wasn't six days because obviously we have billions of years of these animals. And then humans came a long way later. Well, that's, that's not true. They were there from the beginning. They were created along with the animals at the same time, uh, the sixth day. Now, whether that was 10 minutes between or an hour between, I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. It was between the daylight hours. It would have been before 6 o'clock p.m. Because that's when the Sabbath would have started. The seventh day starts at 6 o'clock p.m. on Saturday. Uh, or, or I mean on Friday uh, until 6 p.m. But anyway, um, it says in Matthew 19, 4, it says, And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And for this cause shall a man leave a father and mother, and shall plead to his wife, and they uh, twain shall be one flesh. So he says, from the beginning, at the beginning, he made them male and female, along with the animals on the sixth day. He prepared the earth, the cosmos, everything else was done. So they came into a world ready to go. They could use the stars that he put in there, seeing starlight immediately. They didn't have to wait billions of years for the light to get to earth. Um, he said he stretched out the heavens like a curtain. Which is pretty obvious that the light is there, stretched out, it's still there. God has that ability. There is no uh, 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 rule, law of gravity or time or distance that God abides by. Okay? He doesn't know. He, does, he lives outside of time and, and eternal existence. He is absolutely eternal. Okay? That is not a challenge for him. Um, and uh, I, I love the work that uh, the, the Institute for Creation Research, Answers in Genesis, and Ken Hamley, and a lot of the guys are very highly qualified, got more doctor degrees than anything else, who's, who are, are scientists who are able to show, hey, this is, this is true, you know, and, and uh, show that the Bible is, you know, scientifically as they can. Uh, so we, we have that, because they say they got the scientists, their scientists are right, but, but ours are absolutely <laughs> right because they're, they're following the Bible. But he made them from the beginning. Jesus said they were made from the beginning. Uh, by testifying the reality of Noah and the global catastrophe uh, that was called the flood, he says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Um, he gave it uh, days. It's going to be like that. He talked about it. He was a real, genuine, historical person. And he said in John 8, uh, it says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Um, that tells me Abraham died a long time ago. You know, we have approximately 2,000 years from uh, Adam and the earth being made, everything being created from creation to, to Abraham is right about 2,000 years, give or take a little. Okay? And then it's 2,000 years from Abraham to Jesus. And it's about 2,000 years from Jesus to right now. We're not actually 2020. Our, time, our calendars are not exactly right, but they're, they're within a, several years. But, but that's about where we are. We're, we're just shy less of the 6,000 year mark in our, our life on this earth. We're below that. Um, that's just uh, uh, according to the genealogies and everything of the Bible. Now, secular man will say, oh, it's 10,000, it's 100,000, it's whatever. But the Bible says it's about 6,000 years. Um, but Abraham wanted to see, he, he was, remember, was wanting to see the Messiah. He wanted to see that. People in the Old Testament knew that there was going to be somebody coming to pay for their sins. Okay, they thought it wasn't in a complete vacuum. They knew there would be a sacrifice. So they knew there would be a Messiah. There would be somebody. They didn't know when, how, or anything else completely, but they trusted in God. That's how they got saved is they trusted in him knowing that there would be a sacrifice. We trust in Jesus knowing that he was our sacrifice 
They trusted him knowing that there would be a sacrifice, that God was going to provide a way. And, and uh, that was reckoned in to, to uh, Abraham as righteousness because of his belief. We see that in Hebrews. But they, uh, they were looking toward that. He said, he rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it. How did, how did Abraham see this when he died 2,000 years ago? Well, because he's in heaven. <laughs> and Jesus left heaven, <laughs> you know. He, brought, he, he uh, emptied out uh, uh, the... the uh, 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 Paradise and took everyone to heaven uh, and, and brought him paradise, moved it to heaven uh, as he died on the cross after, after, uh, after that. But anyway, uh, he saw it and was glad. He's telling the Pharisees this. Um, Matthew 19 says, And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that which he which made them at the beginning and made them male and female? He tells them again, Have you not read this at the beginning? He did this. Um, and in Matthew also he says that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Berechias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Um, he talks about Abel as a real person as, and was killed, murdered. And he talks about it as it, like it really happened. That's because it did. Um, he, you know, uh, and we have people who, who try to, to put that down. Jesus continually says, yes, this stuff happened. And he, then he says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For in, as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Um, and he talks about it. that was real life. There were things going on. He talks about Abraham. He says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see him my day, so I was glad. Moses in the bush. Uh, he says uh, in Matthew, he says, and it's touching the dead that they rise. Have you not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Um, he reminds them of that, of what happened in the Old Testament and with, with Moses. He's a real genuine figure. He's absolutely, truly an historical and then David, um, I was listening today, some old stuff I was just going through here, and uh, it, it was an argument that they said, well, most of these people, you can't really prove they ever lived. And at this point, there is no scientific data whatsoever that, you know, archaeological evidence that David ever lived or his kingdom ever occurred. There's nothing. Well, then they found it. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've talked to you about that already. One is, is uh, the pool of Bethesda. Um, trying to find the pool of Bethesda. Well, it doesn't exist. Your Bible is wrong. There is no writings anywhere that talks about the pool of Bethesda. That didn't happen. It's not there. And uh, the guy that found it was reading in the Bible. And it tells where it was at. And you go, hmm. So he used the Bible and went to Jerusalem, went around and found the area, so he started drilling. Now, well, guess what he found in one of his boreholes at 60 feet down? He hit the pool of Bethesda. He found it, and they've excavated it, and they absolutely know there's writings and carvings talking about stuff. They found stuff down there that was talking about uh, 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 Paul and, and how he, what uh, the people of the city were called, uh, and I can't remember what they were called, they have a different name, uh, the kind of like city council members, they had a name for it. And, and historically they say, well, that what word doesn't even exist. There's no evidence. There's never been evidence. What's this crazy word the Bible uses for these people? Nobody used that during the time. They didn't. They just didn't do it. They didn't have work smart enough, whatever. I don't know. They dug it up and dug up tablets and it has that name for their city council members <laughs> right there. It's like, you know, better quit digging because you keep finding <laughs> proof of the Bible all the time, you know. Uh, it's there. Uh, it, we may not have found it, know about it, but it's there. God said it. It's going to be there. But he said uh, about David, he said, but when you said unto them, have you uh, not read what David did when he was a hungered and they were with him? Talking about him getting the, the uh, 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 food, the, the heads of the grain and, and eating them on the Sabbath as it went through. And he talks about like it was, it was a real thing that it happened. Um, and Elijah says, but I tell you of the truth, uh, many widows were in Israel. This is about Elijah, excuse me. 
<clears throat> that uh, many widows in Israel uh, in the days of Elias when the heaven was shut up three and a years and six months, when the great famine was throughout the land. Uh, we know about that. That's historical. It's in the Bible. Talk about him shutting it up. We know that the uh, uh, also that Revelation talks about the two witnesses. They'll have that ability. I think one of them's going to be Elijah. He's going to be there. I truly do. I think it's Elijah and Moses, but that he will be there uh, and can shut up the heavens for as long as they want to rain, quit, stop rain. And they will stop rain over there for a while. They'll have the ability to do all these things. Um, it's a true uh, statement. He was there and he says uh, about Daniel, he said, from that time Jesus began to preach and say, prepare for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, and Jonas, as far as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He, 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 he verified his, his, uh, his death and burial by what Jonah, what had happened to him. So we know it has to be fact. Our, our Lord said that it was. And he says, the men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater Jonas is here. He's talking about himself. He's there now and these people won't, won't repent, but they repented in Nineveh. Um, and uh, uh, that's modern day Iraq's where that's at now. But um, he talks about that. It's a real genuine place. So the Bible is also truly God's word because all the writers said so. All the writers of it say that. There's, there's a harmony of, of conviction by the 40 plus authors that God spoke through for I think it's over 1,500 plus years, whatever, um, of, of the times that it was all written. They didn't get a chance to sit down and all get and meet together uh, and decide what to write. They were just wrote what God had put on their heart and what the Spirit had led them to be able to write. Now, they may have used some writings and some things to help build it. We know that Luke did, uh, used a lot of sources. <clears throat> but they didn't get a chance to get together and get the same idea, but yet we have the exact same idea all the way through Scripture of over 1,500 <clears throat> excuse me, years that they've been doing it and, and all these 40 different authors that he used to be able to write the Bible. They can be completely uh, uh, different, but they all agree in harmony. There's no uh, uh, contradictions between it at all. I said, I believe the Bible is truly God's word because of its incredible unity. Um, you know, it was about 1,600 years, all these 60 generations, there's one thing that, that, that this, this uh, 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 everything goes through the Bible. It's like a, a, a fabric that's woven from, from uh, one place to the other, from a, <coughs> from a prison to a palace, from a desert to a dungeon, from a hillside to holy places. It doesn't matter where it all occurred at, it's all there. And it all follows through that same thing. There's a common denominator, one shared theme, one united message. Uh, there's only one system of doctrine, uh, one system of ethics, one plan of salvation, and one rule of faith. That's the thing is, is being saved and, and being uh, justified by God is the exact same it was for Adam and Eve as it will be for the very last person they get saved before uh, uh, at the end of time when everything's over with. It's the same way. There's going to be a different way actually in the in the tribulation. It's still the same, but but they'll have to do some different. But I'm just saying that that it's the same way. Uh, you know, people think, well, you had to do this, and no, you didn't have to do uh, sacrifices and all that in the Old Testament. Yes, you had to do them, but that didn't save you. It was your heart that saved you. Even in the Old Testament, you had to be born again. Remember Jesus talking. He said you had to be born again. He said that's Old Testament, even though it's our New Testament. That was the Old Testament following the Jewish law perfectly because Jesus never sinned. He never violated the Jewish law that was written. Everything did everything perfectly. And he, he taught uh, Nicodemus to be born again. Same thing today. we got to be born again. That makes it all the way through. And the biggest thing, this is one of the biggest things for me. Yes, Jesus is, and that is, but uh, I believe the, uh, the Bible is truly God's word because of its fulfilled prophecy. Um, that's the most profound evidence that the Bible offers. 
Um, it, 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 it is prophecy fulfilled, uh, uh, irrefutable uh, verification that we have. Um, that does not exist. That's the big missing element in every other sacred text. Because people will say, well, the Muslims have the Quran, Jews have the Tanakh, the Pen they have this, that. And I mean, everybody has, has something. The, the Hindus have something. Uh, uh, the Book of Mormon, they have their book, their Bible. Uh, Mary Baker Eddy, and I can't remember all the 17 last names that she's had. Um, uh, the Christian Science, who wrote all that, wrote that. There's, there's nothing there. There is nothing in any of them at all as far as prophecy and being fulfilled. None. That is completely uh, 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 only found in the Bible. That's it. Nowhere else. I mean, if you look at the Book of Mormon, it's, it's like reading fairy tales. You know, there's this, it's already been proven. It's almost laughable, some of the things and the places. Never existed. You know, and they know, scientists know, everybody knows that they didn't exist. They weren't even there. Um, there's so much, that it's all, a lot of them are just good sayings, like reading some Proverbs or something, but even our Proverbs has prophecy in it, has absolute truth in it. But uh, it's just like reading good stuff, maybe that tells you what you do, but, but you, there's nothing to verify that it is true. There's no way to, to verify. Well, how do you verify that somebody's telling you something that is absolute truth and you can bank on it, you can do anything with it. It's because of prophecy. Because what God said, okay, it's going to come true. What was going to happen to you if you if you were a prophet and you said this was this and this was going to happen and God thus saith the Lord and it didn't happen, it didn't occur, what happened to them? They <laughs> got stoned. You take them out, they're a liar. They're not for me. Um, and uh, that's that was a death penalty because God said, no, you hear it from me or my prophets, it's 100% true, will always be true, and can't be proven wrong. And we see that there's hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, uh, fulfilled prophecy. You know that about a third of your Bible is prophecy. Some of it has been already fulfilled, and a whole bunch of it is still to be fulfilled. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot there. That's what tells us, because we know it's we can go back in history. We know there were people there. We have eyewitnesses. We have that to prove that somebody said something and it happened. As we get into the book of Daniel, there, it's under, you know, people say, oh, no, 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 it happened way, way later. Now, him and Elijah were, were uh, together, and Ezekiel, I mean, were together. Well, how'd they, how'd they know when he, all that happened? He wrote it 200 years after he died. I mean, this is crazy. But they have to do that. The liberals have to attack the word and say, no, it didn't happen this time, it happened later, because he wouldn't have known nothing about all this stuff. He wouldn't have known about the uh, Babylonian captivity. He wouldn't have known that until after it happened, you know. Um, anyway, so th th there's a lot about that. And that's usually that what you see is, is the argument, well, they, you know, they just don't know. They did it later. Well, you can't say that, and, and there's lots of proof that it happened at the time. Um, Isaiah 41, 21, he's talking about, about he says, Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong uh, reasons, saying the key, uh, king of Jacob. Uh, present your case. Bring it, bring it forth. Um, what, what is it that you have, the, the Bible, that is not true? You know, that, that is it. Bring it. You know, uh, go against God. Talk directly to him. See if he will. It's not going to happen. Uh, you don't have that case. There's no case whatsoever. And one thing is I believe it is because of its scientific accuracy. And uh, man, just a few chapters of Job be enough to pr prove just about everything, especially the, the extraterrestrial nature of the book. Uh, we got extraterrestrials, you know, they, it's all on History Channel. Those extraterrestrials come in and taught everybody. Everybody learned their, you know, got the alien technology. That's all exciting, you know. Well, yeah, we got extraterrestrials called God. <laughs> He's the one who's outside our terra firma who has, has taught us and he teaches in all instruction. All knowledge and all wisdom comes from God. That's our extraterrestrial. That's the only one. Um, it's not all this other stuff. Um, but uh, th that's it. And, and uh, you know, if you read, read a, an old uh, uh, 
biology book or some of the old science books or, or things from way back, it, it's laughable. You're like, huh, they said this? Well, we've already proven that wrong. It's like reading an old uh, 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 newspaper or something and somebody says, it's like, oh man, that's not the way it is. We, we know now it's not, it's wrong, you know, it's ridiculous. It's funny how all the stuff that man comes up with expires. They're constantly changing what they say, right? The, uh, uh, the world's going to freeze to death. We're going to have another ice age. It's coming. The, it's freezing. The polar ice caps will take over the United States and Europe again. It's going to just it's going to fix it to be bad. It's got global cooling. Oh, wait a minute. It's not global cooling now. It's global warming. And then we go through global warming. We're all going to burn up. It's going to be horrible. We're just going to, the equator will just turn to ash, I guess. I don't know. It's all bad. And then, oh, wait a minute. It's not warming. It's not cooling. It's just changing. So now we have climate change. That is the religion, along with evolution, that every liberal's got to believe in. And they do believe it. It is a religion. It is a philosophical belief, okay? Uh, we ain't worried about it because we know what's going to happen. Uh, it's funny, you know, they go on about uh, saving the whales watching these shows. And that's okay. We need to save, take care of all the animals while we're here. But I'm thinking, like, do you not know that you could be only a short time away from every single animal in the oceans completely dead? Because my Bible tells me that's going to happen soon. Everything gone. <laughs> There's going to be great judgment. Even those in the fresh water, in the wells, in the, in the lakes are going to be dead. That's what the Bible tells me is fixing to happen. But we're got to go out here and save all the whales and, and we do all these things. And like I say, it's important that we save them while we're here. But at the same time, we got to take care of, of, of people first. God's going to judge this world and all that stuff we're working for is going to be gone one day. It's going to be different. He'll fix it and heal it when he comes back and sits on the throne in Jerusalem. He's going to fix it then. He's going to uh, redeem uh, the earth uh, back away from, from Satan. But it's a, a, it has a scientific accuracy. Um, you look at an old astronomy textbook. Boy, that's, that we'll find a lot. You know the old world book encyclopedias? You know, I finally got rid of all of mine, but I find something, you go through them and read them back in the 60s and 70s and all that. And what we thought about certain things is totally different. Once they put up that Hubble Space Telescope and a lot of other things, we've been able to see things and, and do things that we had no idea before. None. And uh, it's just unbelievable. Um, so you see that. It's, it's nearly every area of science there's always, it's always in flux. It's always, always changing. They got to change, you got to restate, uh, we got to cast out the old, uh, the old disproved statements. We got to bring in the new. This is the way it is now, we think, but it's the way it is. And then that changes. There's always error and mistake in theories, but not with God. He says it right uh, the first time. The other reason that I believe it's truly the word is because of archeological verification. Um, in, in, in the 19th century, uh, Sir William Ramsey, an English skeptic, set about to disprove the historicity of the Bible. He took as his target the book of Acts. He started digging in modern Turkey, ancient Asia Minor. What he found amazed the world of archaeology. Not only were all the cities that Paul spoke of traveling actually there, even the words he used to describe the public officials were found. That's what I told you before. Um, and he became a believer by that, by all the stuff that he did. He was certainly an atheist. He had no, no, he was a skeptic, but he, he became a believer because of the historical reliability of the Word of God. And there, he's not the only one. There's several that we can name, several people that we know of who started out as atheists and scientists, and they're going to prove it wrong. And, it's, and they're good scientists, and they do it properly and right, and, and they can't prove it wrong. They get saved because they realize that it's absolute truth. And they have that mind. Some people want to want to have a feeling, uh, whatever. There's others who have the uh, analytical mind uh, that, that you could lay out the evidence for, and, and they would believe because of that. And that's the way he was. 
Uh, one of them is, is, through, is because of its endurance through the ages because continued on and continued on through all the empires, the armies, the infidels. The Bible stands like a rock that's undaunted uh, through all the raging storms of time. It's always here. Its pages uh, uh, burn with the truth uh, and, and uh, uh, eternally uh, it glows like a light. Um, uh, it stands uh, through everything and all the storms and all the things on earth. It, it's, it's a firm foundation that we can stand up. God's word is, is, is completely true. Um, Luke uh, says that he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. That was one who was on his road to Emmaus, and they didn't know who he was. And then they were saying, oh my gosh, did you know all the things that happened to Jerusalem? And, and they crucified this guy, and, and Jesus went, and let me tell you, and, and he started at, at Moses and all the prophets and came through and, and described himself, Jesus, all through the Old Testament, because Jesus is there, okay? may not be in name, but it's in... in, in uh, uh, a concept that he's there. He's in every book of the Old Testament. Uh, but he brings that, he expounds to them all those about himself. And of course, they, they believed and understand that. Um, we have uh, 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 this astrophysics of dark matter. Job 38 and 40. I'm going to tell you, man, uh, I just I love that. I can read that and then read it and read it again uh, all through that because that's, that is the place in the Bible. It's the oldest book. Uh, in our Bible, or earliest written, I should say, in our Bible. And it's at a point where, where God speaks directly. And, and uh, uh, you hear him speak. Though he does speak through all the word, this is, he's, he's questioning Job and putting it on him. Uh, well, you tell me. And he says, where is it the light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? Job 38 and 19, where is darkness? Uh, well, um, you know, it, 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 they don't even know where this dark matter is. They know it's there. They've been able to determine that, that there is actual dark matter. They don't understand exactly where it's at, whatever. But already God said, do you know where it's at? I know where it's at. I know where there is this dark uh, uh, matter. And just recently, um, well, let me read to you. In gravity, what is gravity? How do you know gravity? Well, in Job 38, 31, it says, Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Talking about constellations. One of the major areas of astronomy is the gravitational tug of stars and systems. This did not happen until Hubble and his telescope and his people up there looking. They have discovered, for sure, there are two constellations that are keeping stuff together and tugging on stuff that have this gravitational pull. There's only two that, that have found anywhere. These only two out of all of them. Guess what two those are that are holding us together. Pleiades and Orion. And God said even back to Job, the sea, can you bind this, the sweet influences, this, this gravity, can you bind that? Or loose the bands of Orion. You can't. You can't move them. They're they're working together to to keep that in. And that was not discovered until just recently, the last 20, 30 years, where we've had Hubble's telescope up there. Oceanography. Hast thou entered in the springs of the sea, or hast thou walked in search of the depth? Um, he talks about the the that and and, and the the springs of the deep. Up until the 1800s, when the, the French did their bathosphere and stuff, that no one had been in the bottom of the ocean. Somebody might could have dug down pearl divers to maybe 60 feet before they got crushed. They said possibly at the most maybe 100. They had divers, free divers, go down and come up and done that. No one has ever done that up until the 1800s, later 1800s, when they had a way to get down into the depths. And you know what we found? A whole bunch of springs down in the bottom of the ocean. Huge plumes of water, some of them toxic, but there's a whole ecosystem of life living around those springs. Some of them are hot uh, coming up out of the uh, ground, some of them are toxic and they still live there just fine. And there's animals who can who survive in that. 
We're able to see that. Nobody's been down there but God had because he built it. He knew it was there and he asked him to. Now we discovered in, from Job 38, 16, just recently that that's, that's true. Uh, he talks about in Job 39, 26, 30, as the hawk fly by its wisdom and stretch her wings toward the south. As the eagle mount up at thy command to make her nest on high. She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock, the strong place. From thence she seeketh the prey, and in her eyes behold afar off. Her young ones also suck up blood where the slain are. There uh, uh, is she. Um, the migratory things of all are animals and birds. They, how did that get wired into them? You know, from supposed evolution. You know, they know exactly where to go. You can take a, 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 this, this in Bristol Bay in Alaska, take these sockeye salmon, and they've done this. They've grabbed them and tagged them and GPS them and carried them way off somewhere, totally in a different ocean or carried around the bottom side of, of Alaska and they're turn them loose. And they'll go right back up through Bristol Bay, right back up where they go every year, and they go by the uh, 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 millions every year they go through. They continually follow that route. And no matter if you can grab them and carry them off and spin them around three times, try to get them, they still will go all the way across the ocean right back to where they need to go. Who put that in there? God did. He provides uh, for everything. So um, God is, is that. Uh, he, he is that. That's one reason why we know so many other things, so many other ones. We, we, we see, especially Job has a lot of it. There's uh, the, the study of electricity. There's a the study of hydrology of how the water already in the Bible talks about how, how, how it, uh, uh, the evaporation system is. It evaporates, goes up into the clouds, and it comes over and it rains and it continues. We didn't know that till you know, a couple hundred years ago maybe. Um, but it's in the Bible. It's already there. Job looked and he could see like the earth like he was out away from it. He said it's a sphere. It's, it's, a, it's a ball. It's a circle. It's not flat. But yet, um, ancient painting showed it being flat. The Hindus had it sitting on top of some elements that was carrying it around. So we see all this stuff all the time. Um, uh, uh, that that uh, um, that God has 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 placed some really unbelievable senses into the animal world. He's done so many things. He give them this internal compass and all that. Everything works together. He takes care of it. He asks it, who, who feeds these animals where there's thousands of miles from any human before humans ever got there uh, or found the area we discovered. There's been animals up there. Who feeds them? Who makes sure that, they're, that they live? Who makes sure that there's going to be enough uh, greenery and other animals that they can eat? Everything is taken care of. God uh, maintains that and keeps that. He's got that internal compass. So this is the thing that we ask today is that he's put that internal compass in every living being and he's also put us into us an internal compass of where we need to be pointing to, where we need to be, be, be looking to. Uh, the king of the universe, our creator, he, he didn't leave us out. He put one in there. Now what I ask you today is how is your compass? Where is your directional capacity at uh, as far as the word of God and knowing it? Where is it that you're focusing on? Where is it that we are, are, are looking at? Um, you know, uh, uh, all these animals are able to detect our magnetic fields and, and, and all this kinds of stuff and be able to know where to go. But we have a direct line to the Creator. And it's in this book right here. Or it might be on your computer, but you have a direct line to the Creator. This is the Word of God. This is how He speaks to us is through his word. Um, we can go to him directly. Uh, we have him. He starts and finishes all that we ever need. And uh, I'm going to tell you that, that don't get uh, uh, led astray or, or worry about all the stuff that people say, our scientists or whatever. We can absolutely <laughs> believe this. Even if it thought it, you sound crazy to some people now because of something in here that, that doesn't jive with our current uh, secular beliefs, it doesn't matter. And uh, there were people who held through all along and said, no, it's not millions of years. Uh, uh, evolution is completely wrong and, and went on and, and stood by that. A lot of them got persecuted, got kicked out of universities and everything else, lost their grants, they lost jobs and things because of it. But 
They know that the word is always true. It's always going to be true. We can count on it. We can bank on it. And I'm going to tell you something. It never returns void. So we can utilize this word to be able to teach and to uh, lead others to Christ. Uh, it's not going to return, like I say, void or out of the way. We have that. We can look unto him. We can look under, under uh, at his word. And it has the ability and the power to change us dramatically and to change mankind to make a difference. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your word. Thank you for all the sacrifices that's been made through the years to be able to, uh, for us to have the written word. We have so much today. We've got Bibles everywhere. We have access online to hundreds of Bibles in every language uh, on the planet. Father, I just pray that as a people that we would focus on you, focus on your word, and understand that our growth is only going to be contingent upon our, our uh, communication and prayer with you and our reading and studying of your word. It is sufficient for all that we do and for all of our lives. And Father, that we can absolutely count on anything and everything that's in this word. Uh, we have uh, no problem in, in uh, standing up for it. I pray, Father, that you just be with our church. I pray that you just be uh, with us. And, and I pray, Father, today that, that uh, if someone is, is uh, watching online or, or watching or here in our service that needs to be saved, Father, that they would give their lives to you and they would just believe in you, Father, and, and, and what you've done for them. Father, we just pray that uh, you would continue to give us uh, wisdom and judgment in everything that we do in and through our lives each day. Let us live it for you. And we'll give you the glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Turn to page 308. Please pass me not on gentle sir.